Welcome to this meeting of Planning and Development Committee. Please note that this meeting is being filmed for live or subsequent broadcast via the Borough Council's website on the internet. The images and sound recording may be used for training purposes by the Council. Generally, the public gallery is not filmed. However, by entering the Council Chamber and using the public seating area, you are consenting to be filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings for webcasting and or training purposes. If you have any queries regarding this, please contact the monitoring officer. We'll now begin the agenda. First item is apologies. I've got uh, Councillor Linsky, Councillor Campbell, Councillor Will Forbes, Councillor Theresa Norton. Are there any other apologies? No, that's it. Declarations of interest. Yeah. One, two, three. Uh, Councillor Jane Mortimer. Uh, agenda item nine, personal non-prejudicial. I was on the allotments working group. Right. Uh, Councillor M. Cockrell. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, item four. Uh, I've been a lifelong supporter of Fairly Lifeboat. No. Sam Cross. Oh, sorry, Councillor Bill Chat. Uh, thank you, Chair. Agenda item nine, uh, it's in my ward and I've discussed it with the Residents Association. It's personal, non prejudicial. Okay. Did you have one as well, Councillor Cross? Or did I just. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, in relation to item four again, uh, my son uh, is a volunteer there, but uh, he works in Amsterdam and when he comes back from Amsterdam, he acts as a volunteer on the lifeboat. Thank you. Councillor Phil Kershaw. Uh, yes, thanks, Chair. Uh, non prejudicial interest in um, item nine, the allotments. It's in my ward and I've discussed it with residents. Right. Councillor Paul Riley. Sorry, yes. Uh, item uh, five, the Britannia Road um, application. Uh, normally, reading and speaking parish council comment on applications relating to the uh, developments at the bay. They haven't actually uh, commented on, on this one, but we, we've commented on such applications in the past. Thank you. It's Councillor no Glenn Goodbury. Thank you, Chair. Uh, personal and non-prejudicial. I was employed by the Iron Life for 35 years. I've been retired seven years. Thank you. Councillor Richard Richmore. Thank you, Chair. It's personal interest item four. Now, I know someone who is a proprietor of an outlet on Cobble Landing, and uh, also item nine, um, personal non <laughs> Personal interest is I'm chair of the allotments group also. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh, members are reminded of the need to consider whether they have a disclosable pecuniary prejudicial or other personal interest to declare in any item on this agenda. Details of any interest must be declared at the start of the meeting or as soon as any interest becomes apparent during the meeting. Minutes. Would somebody like to propose the minutes as a true record of our last meeting? Uh, Councillor Bill Chart and Sam Cross. Uh, we'll vote on the now. All those in favour? Uh, that's everyone. Uh, against? Abstentions? <coughs> didn't attend, Chair. Thank you. So that's passed. I'll sign them and pass them on. Uh, there's no public questions. None have been received. Uh, agenda item number four, planning application, Lifeboat House, three cobble landings, the beach filey. Mr. Reid will present the item. Members, uh, the, uh, obviously showing you the plan so you can clearly see what's proposed, but I've also got quite a lot of photographs of the, uh, the existing building and the surroundings, and that's really intended to illustrate a number of the points made within the report and, and raised by objectors for the benefit of members. So if you can, uh, if you can bear with me on that, please. So the, uh, the first slide is the, the standard location plan. Uh, you can see the, uh, the location of the, uh, uh, of, of the site in the southwestern corner of the, um, of the cobble landing. Uh, I'm sure most members are familiar with that. 
Um, what we have here is the, uh, the site plan as existing and the site plan as, as proposed, which I think is, is quite useful in explaining the, uh, sorry, in explaining the, uh, the proposal. So you've got the, the existing lifeboat house, uh, then behind it in the, in the corner, uh, you've got the, the substation, which is a separate building, and uh, then to the south, you've got the existing water pumping station. Now, the proposal, which in many respects is straightforward in terms of what it involves, um, is to extend the front of the building out by 2.6 metres there, to extend the building by infilling the southwestern corner, and to relocate the the substation behind the existing pumping station as an extension to that building. Uh, what you've got here are the key elevations uh, for, the, um, uh, for the lifeboat station. So you've got the, the existing frontage here. And uh, don't be thrown by the shading. Uh, I'm not quite sure why that's been done. But then you've got the the proposed extension, so the whole of that frontage will come out by 2.6 metres from its existing position. Uh, as you can see, it's very, well, it's identical uh, pretty much to what you've got. The only real change is, and again, it's fairly minor, is different detailing to the main boathouse doors. Um, to the side, uh, the back corner, what you've got at the moment are two uh, narrow gables which are inset and this, this blank rectangle here is the, is the substation. So the substation will disappear and the, the existing main ridge will be extended backwards as you can see there on the line with the existing one and a larger gable end uh, set on the on the back corner. Uh, this next slide shows the uh, the proposed substation. As I say, that will, and as you saw from the um, from the location plan, uh, that's just going as an extension to the uh, to the uh, water pumping station, and it's. Uh, Again, there's a slight difference to the doors, but beyond that, it's virtually the same design as the, uh, the existing one with similar detailing, uh, decorative uh, stonework. And uh, the brick will change slightly because it's gonna be brick to match the, uh, the existing pumping station. So mo moving on to uh, the photographs. This simply shows the, uh, the existing building. And as I explained, the uh, visually, the, the new one will look uh, virtually identical. Uh, you've got the, uh, the pumping station there, so you, you can see you won't see much of the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, substation uh, from the cobble landing itself. And that just shows you what the, uh, well, firstly, the, the back corner, so it, all it will uh, all that will happen is that area will be squared off and the, the pumping station will be, sorry, uh, the substation will be moved forward. And just again, an, another view of, uh, of that. Um, I've shown this photograph uh, because the, uh, there have been some concerns raised that uh, uh, the proposal will... Uh, will restrict movement uh, for pedestrians across the, the front of the lifeboat station. And I think it shows, as you can see, in practice, there's, there's not really much of a, a route there uh, with the, the existing signage, uh, display of goods for, uh, for sale and the, uh, and the bollards. It's not a, a natural or, or, or easy route. And again, that's just from the other side, so you can see the, the signage and, and, and the bollards. Um, this shows the, uh, the building line um, along the cobble landing, and I think the, the, the key element there is the, uh, 
is the two-storey balcony, uh, which projects forward of, of existing buildings. Now, the, uh, the proposed extension to the lifeboat station will extend beyond uh, the line of the, um, the balcony and come just about towards the, where the edge of the, uh, the boat, boat parking is. Uh, and that's just again looking, uh, looking from the other direction, uh, same same view. Uh, and and again, you can see the the frontage. I think what that also shows it's it's not particularly clear because of the direction of the sun. Um, but there were concerns about the uh, the impact on uh, uh, on vistas and, and views, both north and south. Uh, but, but I think you can see there, if you're walking uh, southwards uh, along the cobble landing on the other side of the boats, uh, the, uh, the views of, uh, of Filey Bay and the, the promenade aren't going to be significantly affected by the proposed extension. Uh, this one uh, is intended to show the, uh, the kiosk. Um, as members will have seen, there have been uh, objections to the proposal uh, on the basis of the impact uh, on the, uh, the adjacent kiosk and you can see that it is, uh, it is very close to the, uh, uh, to the existing uh, lifeboat house and, and only has a, a narrow frontage and that just shows it in, uh, in, in further detail. Now in respect of that um, I have to say uh, y yes, because of the proximity uh, and, and the height of the building, there will be uh, an overbearing effect uh, on, on the kiosk it's, itself. And because the extension lies to the south of the, uh, of the hut, there will be some, some overshadowing. It's, it's basically directly, directly south. But given it's a, a, a kiosk that serves directly... Um, onto the street uh, with, um, with no habitable rooms as such. It's considered that those impacts won't be unacceptable from a planning point of view um, and in terms of policy uh, DEC4 which, uh, which seeks to protect uh, amenities. Now again, that's, that's, a member for, uh, that's a matter for members' judgment but uh, that's certainly your, your officer's view having looked very very carefully at it. Um, moving on, uh, again, this is just a view of the the pumping station. That's uh, that's a view uh, from the beach. Uh, again, intended to show the the impact of the proposal on on views uh, in a northerly direction and over towards the brig. And I think if you, if you look at use the the balcony as a reference point. Um, it's certainly my view that, uh, that those views and vistas uh, won't be significantly affected by the, the proposal. Uh, that's just the, the, the view that people will see of the, uh, the proposed substation and a, another one. Um, this shows the, uh, the view of the building uh, from the promenade. Um, I think it's, it's quite good in showing showing the existing building line uh, of the, the cobble landing. And uh, as I say, the, uh, the front extension will extend out towards where you can see the, uh, the boats parked and slightly beyond the, uh, the balcony. And again, that's just again a, a, another close-up view to try and show you uh, what the effect on, uh, on the vista will be, which I think is, is minimal. That's it. So, just to uh, comment very briefly and summarise uh, some of the uh, the key issues. I mean, firstly, I would say I understand the concerns of the uh, operator of the the adjacent kiosk. Uh, I'm not unsympathetic to their their concerns, uh, but what I and you as a planning committee can do is only consider the the planning. Uh, matters uh, related to the development. So the, the visibility 
of a particular business uh, isn't a planning consideration. What you can consider is the, the visual impact on the street scene and of the area in general. And as I've explained, uh, I, I don't think there is an unacceptable uh, impact as a result of the, the extended building. Um, accessibility for pedestrians, um, we've uh, again has been raised as an issue. There will undoubtedly be a pinch point between the corner of the extended building and where the um, where the boats are, are parked. But I have to say, we, and, and, but the whole of the cobble landing is really a shared, uh, shared surface uh, between the operators, users, and, and, and pedestrians. We've had no objections from the highway authority who've recognized that it's a, a shared surface. And we've had no objections uh, from the, the harbor master. Um, the area where the, uh, there will be a sort of tightening of, let's say, the route through uh, isn't a footpath, uh, or as far as I'm aware, a, a right of way. It's certainly not a, a public right of way. And if operational difficulties were caused uh, because of that pinch point, I would suggest that that really is a matter for the harbour master uh, to consider in terms of whether there should be some slight adjustment to the, uh, the boat parking or not rather than a matter for you, uh, for yourselves. Um, it's been suggested that uh, the, the extended building and the, the, the side door into it uh, will cause a conflict with, uh, with people queuing uh, at the kiosk. Now, again, I would suggest that that is really about private rights of, of access and rights to use uh, that particular um, area. Y you could argue um, that, uh, that people queuing at the kiosk actually obstructs people who want to go and move to the lifeboat station. So it's, it's six, six of one and half a dozen of the other. And as I say, really a, a private matter about rights to, to use the access. And I would suggest that really it's, it's no different to the situation where there is any um, direct service uh, from a kiosk onto, uh, onto a footway or, or pavement. Um, I would also say that because my advice would be for members not to get too hung up about that anyway, because in practice, as you've seen from the front elevation, there are a number of doors um, into, the, uh, in, into the lifeboat station. Uh, certainly during the day, uh, my experience is that it it's open anyway to, to attract, the main doors are open to attract visitors. So I'm, I'm wondering in practice how, uh, uh, how much the, uh, the door would be used at the same time as the kiosk is, um, is operating. Uh, so ju just to conclude, um, uh, my view is that it's, the, the proposals are visually acceptable. Uh, there is no serious impact on amenity, although there will be some. Uh, there is no significant impact on important public views and, and vistas. Uh, the proposals won't harm the character of the, uh, the Filey conservation area within which this site is, is located. And the technical issues relating to flood risk and uh, impact on the, the water main have now been resolved. And on that basis, it's recommended for approval. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have one public speaker, Mr. Corrigan. Uh, you have three minutes. Uh, when there's one minute left, you'll hear uh, an audible reminder that there's one minute left. Uh, the clock will start from when you start speaking. So whenever you're ready, please start. Uh, my name is Patrick Corrigan. Um, I've owned property on the Cobble Landing for on the Cobble Landing for in excess of 18 years, although I don't live there now. And in front of the lifeboat house, uh, for the first for the first 20 years that I lived down there, no cars were allowed, so we had to walk. I walked in front of this this building where the proposal is going to be brought out by 2.6 meters um, and I have walked on there for and I've had access for over 50 years and I have taken out a prescriptive right for that so 
I, I, um, you know, I'm against against that unless unless something else can be arranged. I did speak to the harbour master about it, and he assured me that he would move the boats in front of our premises that, that I own at the moment, so we could gain access. Well, he promised to have it done by the first of April, and there's still, you know, quite a few boats there now anyway, so it's going to be difficult. And the other thing is that I didn't want it to become, a, if the boats are moved, I didn't want it to become a car park. So, you know, in principle, um, I object about my right of way. And uh, that's basically all I've got to say. Thank you. Uh, we'll move to the committee now. Any questions by anybody on this issue? If there aren't any questions, we'll move on to a debate. Anybody? Council? Clive Pearson. All I will ask is, could we see the uh, site part, the plan again? Because we went through all the photographs yeah. and I've really forgotten what it... Fine, thank you. Anybody else? Any comments? Councillor Cockrell. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I would just make the comment. It's very disappointing <clears throat> that there was no photos in that presentation of Cobble Landing when it's heaving with pedestrians, which really shows the problem. As I previously declared, I have a personal interest in this application as I've supported Filey RLI for well over 60 years. My wife is secretary to the Filey Ladies Lifeboat Guild that raises a tremendous amount of money for the Filey Station. Therefore, I'm sure you will all understand my deep regret that I have to echo most of the concerns that have been raised by many of the people who actually work on or have businesses on Cobble Landing. The very people who have vast practical rather than theoretical experience of how Cobble Landing works. When it first became known that a different lifeboat would be stationed at Filey, a number of options for housing the vessel were investigated. And at that time, I had the Cobble Landing in my cabinet portfolio. I noticed that the application documentation does not refer to all of these, only those relating to the modification of the existing boathouse. That, in my opinion, is a serious omission in the information provided by the applicant. When it was first accepted by RNLI headquarters that the building was of insufficient size to accommodate the boat and tractor, originally they thought it was all right. It must have been an elastic tape. The RNLI started to look at possible modifications to the boathouse, and those centres centred on extending out at the front or extending at the rear of the boathouse. Another idea was to entirely relocate the Filey lifeboat station slightly to the north, to the top of the slipway leading to the beach. There is a building currently used as a gift shop, which was offered by the owners to the RNLI to re relocate the lifeboat station to the top of the slipway. And indeed, the owners of this building inform me that they even have a letter of intent from the RNLI. This alternative receives no mention in the documentation before us today. This option would have significantly reduced the risk of conflict between vehicular traffic and pedestrians. My main concern is in regard to the principle of extending out onto the Cobble Landing rather than any of the alternatives that were considered. The proposal is to extend the whole frontage of the existing boathouse by approximately 2.6 metres. In a nutshell, I share the concerns expressed by many people who actually have the experience of working or operating from Cobble Landing for many years. We read in the report that the detrimental effect that it is likely to have forced upon nearby businesses, particularly the one adjacent, isn't a matter for this committee. But I would suggest that it will actually decimate that business. Can the same be said about the safety concerns due to the reduction in the width of access to areas further along the Cobble Landing, and this is where it would have been very useful to have had photos during the height of the summer, and not only the summer, but other uh, 
parts of the year with the staycations. Anyone who knows the situation on Cobble Landing, not only during the season but at other times of the year as well, understands that the route along this part of Cobble Landing is already ripe with conflict between vehicles and pedestrians. In recent years, as Filey has become even more popular, the problems with safe access have increased. Cobble Landing is tight enough as it presently exists. Indeed, this was exacerbated with the granting of permission for the balcony to the front of the Cobble Landing Bar, the building adjacent to the lifeboat station that is mentioned in the report before us. It seems that the RNLI at Poole have not considered the detrimental effect on the safety of the general public. Indeed, I see no evidence that these vital matters have even been considered. It is not as though efforts have been made to try to get the RNLI at Poole and its consultants to consult locally. I believe the RNLI has failed seriously with this application. It has not taken advantage of the opportunity to discuss the modifications before formally submitting them. The Cobble Landing User Group, formed by the Borough Council to discuss such matters, hasn't been formally consulted. Filey Town Council wasn't involved prior to receiving the application. I could go on, but the concern expressed in most of the comments from members of the public, including many of the businesses who operate in adjacent premises on Cobble Landing, carry far more weight than mine alone. Of particular interest are the comments from the immediately adjacent businesses whose concerns echo my own. Additionally, the adverse comments from the Filey fishermen, who surely no one can dismiss. Everyone who has anything to do with the Cobble Landing supports the Filey branch of the life RNLI. Indeed, most residents support the essential work undertaken by the Filey branch. The support also forthcoming from visitors and people living away is tremendous. The fact that there is significant opposition to the principle of this application is of concern and substantiates the, the strength of that concern. So we have a dilemma. I have a significant dilemma. I'm torn between my ongoing support for the Filey Lifeboat Station, but having serious concerns that the application is in the best interest not only of Filey's Cobble Landing, but of the Filey Lifeboat Station itself. We hear and read the comments that according to theory, the application is sound. However, from the practical point of view, and here we have the comments and concern from the people who actually work on Cobble Landing, we hear a totally different version. Besides the principle of the application before you today, i.e. to extend out onto Cobble Landing, extending back into the cliff was considered. This would involve exactly the same process as when the present boathouse was constructed in the early 1990s. This is the idea that is favoured by many of the people who know about such matters, i.e. the local people. Finally, there's firm evidence of the concern in regard to the application before us today. I will quote from a letter from the Filey Lifeboat Operations Manager in my capacity as portfolio holder in March 2015, and I quote, the obvious solution is to extend the boathouse back into the cliff by a minimum of three metres and a retaining wall constructed, as was done when the current boathouse was built 22 years ago. It cannot be extended to the front because it will stick out too far onto the cobble landing. For those reasons, I would urge colleagues to listen and take heed, not only to myself, but to the people who know the detail of what happens on cobble landing better than anyone else before voting on this application in its current form. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cocker. That was very extensive and detailed. I wonder if anybody else wishes to comment. Nobody else will. Well, can I just say, I went to the Cobble Landing because I was confused by the drawings I was getting, and I saw it, and I was very concerned at the effect on the business next to it. I see no reason why a side door needs to be put there because, in effect, it will make it impossible for that business to ever come to the front and extend out. And I personally, if this is going to be passed, would like that side door to be removed. There isn't a side door at the moment. They seem to manage well. Uh, so why would the additional side door be needed? Is there a, can we remove that side door? Is that possible? Um, they, they've 
simply said that it's uh, it, it's a personnel uh, uh, door door in. Uh, I don't know the detail of of, of why it's needed. Uh, as a as a committee, you you can't actually remove the door. What you can do is is go back to the applicants and um, and ask them to uh, to remove it. Uh, what I would suggest, and I don't want to get ahead of things here, but if members were minded to uh, approve the application subject to the removal of, uh, of that door, and, uh, and you voted uh, for that today, then rather than bringing it back just to see that the door had been yeah. removed, uh, I would suggest that that aspect uh, be delegated to officers so that uh, an approval could be issued upon receipt of yeah. uh, of amended plans. Yeah. Uh, anybody else further? Yes, Councillor Riley. Uh, just, just a question looking at the plan and um, there's been a discussion about um, congestion and danger to pedestrians and the fact that this building is coming forward and altering sight lines. The, there are sort of five car parking spaces in, in front of the, the lifeboat station and then beyond that I think there are another six or seven parking spaces in front of the business, businesses further to the north. Are those parking spaces all for members of, of, of the public? Um, the, the, the ones particularly to, to the north in front of the cafe and the, 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 the various shops, are they, are they for sort of local, local residents? Or, yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering what, to what extent there's there's going to be continuing manoeuvring to get in, in and out of those spaces. <laughs> Mr. Reid will reply, then I'll come on to yeah. you. Um, the, um, what you describe as the, uh, the parking place, uh, places to the, the north in front of the Cobble Landing Bar are, are actually boat parking uh, spaces. Uh, the, uh, the parking spaces in front of the, the pumping station, um, I have to say I'm... Uh, I'm not entirely sure whether they're public or, or operational. From memory, and it's, it's a dangerous thing, I think when you get to the, the edge of the cobble landing, it says sort of no unauthorised vehicular access. Um, so that the, uh, the, uh, the parking spaces that, um, that face, face southwards, they're definitely public spaces. I don't think, but I could be corrected, that the... Uh, the other parking spaces are. Just let's um, see if I can find an appropriate photograph we've got. Uh, yeah, they're there. Uh, you can see there, um, although they've, there are signs and it does say pay, pay at the meter, uh, so they could be. For some reason, and I've no idea, at the time of the, uh, the site visit, they were, they were actually coned off. But, yeah, because I can't be sure on those uh, those five spaces, I'm afraid. Councillor Mike Cockrell, can you shed some light on that? Yeah, earlier this year, those five spaces, uh, the seaward side of the pumping station, were designated purely for use by the RNLI when uh, the lads are on a shout. Right. Councillor Roberta Swires. Thank you, Chair. Um, as being a formal Filonian, I can see... The problems, you know, we, it is so narrow beyond that lifeboat house. When that lifeboat needs to come out, when the, just when it's busy, but it's always busy, there is very little room. Um, and I'm thinking of the safety of pedestrians, children. You've got them excited running to the beach. I didn't, to me, it doesn't want anything else protruding out on that on any part of that you know it it is extremely tight and i don't know where you, there is nowhere to gain any space on that area right the way down i, I don't see how you can alter it to, to and the other worry is that the businesses down there i know there isn't many but what businesses are there will be having deliveries etc you know um are they to be telling deliveries you must come very early before the tourists or even and local people come out. Um, it's not the best idea, but I don't know how else it can be extended other than, as Councillor Cockrell says, backwards. Um, it certainly needs the extension, but I'm not sure this is, is the right way once it, you know, in my view anyway. Thank you. Councillor Glenn Goodbury. Yeah, thank you, Chair. 
Um, Cobble Landings, I've been down there on numerous occasions and uh, I'm still very good friends with the old Cox and Mechanic. Um, there's always going to be a conflict between uh, people on the slipway and the operational side of the RNLI. Um, and it's just got to be managed. The crew generally act as marshals and move people out of the way. And people are, I can tell you from personal experience over many years, very compliant. They realise the uh, seriousness of, uh, of what the RNLI do and, uh, and, and, and the urgency of getting the, uh, well, in, in this case, the D-class and an Atlantic away. Um, I do uh, share some of Councillor Cockrell's concerns relocating the lifeboat station further down to the north I would imagine would be a huge expense and uh, if it could go backwards then I, I would think that would go a long way to making a lot of people happy but as I say you're always going to have a conflict with pedestrians, holiday makers, boat owners but they've all just got to try and work together it works at every lifeboat station that's how it is. Thank you. Councillor Clive Pearson. Thank you, Chair. I do notice it's in a conservation area, and I do wonder what um, what we should be what what we should be thinking about that because it's in the conservation area. Is it that building which is in the conservation? What's been actually in the conservation? If we're going, to, if it's the building, how much should we be changing that building design? Uh, and I think the only way for me to uh, is to go and have a look at that. And I was just wondering whether a site visit might be appropriate on this occasion. Are you proposing that? Deferral for a site visit. Proposing You're proposing that. that. Uh, we'll take a vote on that after we listen to what Councillor John Nock has to say. Thank you, Chairman. Well the, the fact that uh, this work will uh, improve the launch efficiency of the lifeboat and also have the side effect of enhancing the facilities uh, there for the RNLI is a big persuader for me to, uh, to, to, to vote for this. Right. Thank you, Chairman. Could you answer one of the questions which was put by Councillor Clive Pearson? Is it the area that's conserved or is it specifically a building? Uh, the, the whole of the Cobble Landing uh, lies within the, the conservation area. Um, as I explained in, in the report, the, um, the lifeboat station is a, is a relatively uh, modern building uh, from about 1990, I think, uh, although it was designed to reflect the old Victorian uh, lifeboat station that it re replaced. Uh, most of the other buildings um, on Cobble Landing don't, don't have particularly architectural merit as, uh, as historic uh, buildings. Uh, but to be fair, they do add to the character, their typical seaside uses, and, um, and you've got the chalets at the end as well, which again are very evocative uh, of, of a traditional seaside resort. But I think the main reason that the, the whole of the Cobble Landing is in is that it, it is, a, is an historic site, and it's about the, the heritage of, of Filey's fishing industry, and it's, it's links to that, rather than any individual uh, buildings. But, if it helps, uh, in terms of the impact on the conservation area, uh, you really need to judge whether that extension and the appearance and whatever will will adversely affect the, the special historic uh, character of the area. Thank you. We have a motion to defer for a site visit. Do I have a seconder? Can we do this first and then if it passes, can do it. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Bill Chart. So we have a proposer and a seconder. So we'll go to the vote on that, deferring for a site visit. All those in favour, please raise your hand. All those against? Anybody abstaining? One abstention. That, that motion is carried and uh, we defer for a site visit. Yes, Councillor Coco. Could I ask that it's arranged to take place during the school holidays mm. when hopefully if the weather's fine, people can see just exactly yeah. the, what the problem is? Yeah, 
I think that would be good if it could be done in August before September. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Right, we'll move on to agenda item five. Thank you, Mr. Corrigan, you may leave now if you wish to. Planning application to Britannia Drive, Moor Road, Filey. Planning officer, Mr. Reid, will present the item. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. I promise not as many slides uh, this, t this time around. Um, Firstly, I have to say the, uh, the title on the report, uh, unfortunately, wasn't amended and the, uh, the, the application uh, is now for uh, five shepherd's huts rather than the nine that were originally submitted. Um, and although described as, as shepherd's huts, uh, these uh, aren't mobile units. Uh, they're, they're actually permanent buildings uh, on, on uh, concrete foundations, uh, very similar in terms of the construction form to the beach houses and, and lodges that are found elsewhere on the, the bay and which I know members are, are very familiar with. Um, so the, uh, the first slide uh, shows the, uh, the location uh, behind the existing houses on Turnbury Drive and Britannia Drive and against the uh, uh, the edge of the, the coastal ravine, uh, which is the whole of the area, which is uh, the, which is identified in in dark green uh, up here. That that is basically a, 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 a cliff slope, and then you've got the beach uh, at, at this point here. Uh, I'm showing this uh, this plan just so you can see the location of the the site in the in the context of the overall holiday village. And as you can see, it's right, right on the periphery of the existing village. Uh, that is the, uh, the location plan for the, uh, the five units. Uh, so what you've actually got is obviously the, the five units in the, in the dark pink. You've got the, the boundary, the physical boundary, which at the moment is a post and, and rail fence along the edge of the the ravine. Uh, I don't know how well it's showing up, but this, this darker strip here, uh, which will be three metres wide, is the proposed uh, planted buffer uh, between the, uh, the site of nature conservation interest and the, uh, and the shepherd's huts. Uh, that will be a mixture of uh, rough grassland, um, scrub planting, uh, and also it stated some trees, although I have to say probably the, the space and room available for tree planting is, is probably limited in, in practice. Uh, you can see the, uh, the pedestrian access through between the existing houses and then it extends between the proposed shepherd's huts and, and the existing houses and the, the car parking area uh, is in this location. It would use the, the existing uh, car park to the rear of the, the on-site pub. Uh, th there are no additional uh, parking spaces proposed um, and the applicants haven't stated whether or not uh, there will be any dedicated or reserved uh, parking for these particular units. And that, uh, that shows the proposed shepherd's huts um, I think uh, I'll just point out a few features. Firstly, to the rear, uh, you have got a, a bedroom window. Uh, you've got a covered veranda, which would look out onto the site of uh, nature conservation interest. Um, and, and finally, you can see here there are wheels, uh, but these aren't actually supporting the, uh, uh, the structure. It's actually on a, on a concrete pad, which is the the lighter white strip uh, that you see there. 
Um, this, uh, this site shows, uh, sorry, this slide shows the site uh, looking eastwards towards the, towards the sea. Uh, obviously, you can see the existing uh, holiday homes uh, with the, uh, the large area of glazing both to the sides and, uh, and at ground and first floor level on their, on their gable ends. Uh, the bushes are the, uh, the site of nature conservation interest. Uh, that, that actually uh, starts um, where, where you see that post and, and rail fence. That's simply looking in the, uh, in, in the other direction, westwards. Uh, this, this slide actually shows the, uh, the view out across the... Um, across the sink. Uh, I don't know how well it shows up at the scale that, that you've got, but what you can see uh, al along the, the top of the bushes are the cliffs uh, along the rest of, of, of Filey Bay and, uh, and, and down to Bempton. Um, now, it's not an interrupted view at all, uh, but there is concern uh, that with the verandas on, those, uh, on, the, on the proposed units, you might get people who attempted, particularly the owners of the units, uh, if, if they're there regularly, might be tempted to do a bit of um, unauthorised sort of lopping and, and pruning. If, if there's a particular bit of a bush that seems to inhibit their, mm. uh, their view and they think they can just improve it a little bit. And I have to say that's a, a genuine concern. Uh, I'm sure the applicants would say, no, they'd manage it, but you know, they can't police it. 24 hours a, a day, and I think that's just another pressure, or potential pressure, on the uh, on the designated uh, nature site. Uh, this slide shows the uh, uh, the gap between the two existing properties that would form the pedestrian access. And I think again, you can see clearly there there's, there's considerable glazing uh, on the on, on the side. Uh, and, and backs of those houses, uh, and, and, and I'm concerned that the coming, uh, comings and goings to the new units would uh, would result in serious loss of privacy uh, for those those particular um, occupants. And again, this uh, this slide shows the backs of the existing, and just illustrates how open and glazed they are. Uh, there's, there's a lack of any formal boundary uh, or planting. As you can see, they've, they've actually got uh, five casement uh, patio doors there, so they're very, very open. Uh, and, uh, and at uh, first floor level as well. Uh, some of the, well, the units, the proposed new units will be uh, f from 6.6 .6 to 13 metres away. And again, it's considered that there will be excessive uh, overlooking and, and loss of privacy for the occupants of those existing houses, even taking into account that they are holiday homes rather than uh, permanent dwellings. And uh, that's the end of the, uh, the slideshow. Just a, 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 a few final comments and a summary. Firstly, the, the council's engineers have confirmed that they've got no objections on either uh, land stability or drainage grounds. Uh, so that's, that's not an area of concern. Uh, your office's concerns and, and the reasons for recommending refusal are firstly the, the loss of what is a, an important local buffer uh, between built development and the, uh, the cliff edge. Uh, it, it might not be so significant in wider landscape terms, but I think locally, in terms of the immediate environment, it's a, it is an important uh, buffer. Um, an inappropriate design, it is felt that uh, putting units that look like uh, traditional shepherd's huts are actually quite out of place and, uh, and sort of rather twee and contrived within the context of what are quite modern uh, bricks and mortar uh, houses. Um, the uh, the impact on amenity, uh, particularly the uh, the severe levels of uh, of overlooking 
and, and loss of privacy for the occupants of the, the existing holiday homes, and the adverse impact on the uh, adjacent site of interest for nature conservation uh, and ecology. And if, if I can comment a little further on, on that for members' benefit, uh, as you will have seen, uh, following the reduction in the number of, of units and the introduction of that sort of three metre uh, buffer, the council's ecologist did, did actually withdraw his, um, his objection to the scheme. Um, but I have to say, uh, your, your planning officers aren't satisfied that those measures will uh, sufficiently protect the, uh, the site of nature conservation interest. Firstly, a, a three metre buffer is, is extremely narrow and you are moving uh, human activity right up to the, the edge of, of that, uh, that buffer. Um, they talk about tree planting, but as I mentioned, I think within a three metre buffer, it's, opportunities for that are going to be are going to be very limited. And, uh, and having looked at it, and in the context of uh, policy EMV5, which seeks to, uh, to take a positive approach to nature, nature conservation, we're not, we're, not, we're not satisfied that this proposal and the, the proposed mitigation measures would successfully do that. Firstly, there will still be disturbance from noise and light spill, uh, and it will be even nearer, and there will be more of it. Uh, than is currently the situation. Uh, there's no reason to think that there will be a reduction in, in the litter problem that's there, given, again, you're increasing uh, the number of users. Uh, and, and similarly, the, you know, the tipping of garden waste and, and building waste is a problem. And uh, our view is that w with such a narrow uh, buffer, that is, it's happened up to now, and it's, it's likely to, uh, to happen again. It's not a significant buffer or barrier to, to that. Um, so effectively, uh, this proposal just moves those potential problems uh, closer to the sink, and, and I would suggest intensifies them. Uh, and on that basis, the application is recommended for refusal. Thank you. I'll open this to members' questions. Uh, Roberta Squires, do you have a question? Not a question, just a comment. I yeah. totally agree with the whole report. I've read it two or three times. That's a very small buffer. I don't know what trees you plant, but recently this place is just getting overdeveloped. But I know we're only looking at this application, but I don't think it matches when you look at the... Those are lovely. You know, you've got a lot of glass. Mm. You're going to waste that view, that, that privacy... In, in a very narrow area um, I, and I, I've been up here and over the years they are not looking after this site whether it's physically or any other way it's such a shame because it's a beautiful area and I absolutely agree I think they would if they were quite near there be chopping to get a much better view so I would like well at the end of the day I would certainly move the recommendation as it is for refusal Thank you. Uh, Councillor Glenn Goodbury. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I think this application highlights uh, the importance for me of site visits. Um, when we went there, um, those brick-built properties, as you can see, people sat outside on an evening having a drink, relaxing, kids outside playing football, whatever they want to do, sunbathing. This, to me, is just cramping up that area and the access to this area um, is very narrow. It's a pedestrian footpath. You're gonna have holiday makers walking past people's windows with their suitcases and entourage. And I would just echo what uh, Councillor Spears says. I would be prepared to second um, this motion in line with the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Sam Cross. Thank you, Chair. Really, just to echo the, the previous two speakers, these are shepherds up. They're totally out of place. We're going to have more cars, more humans, and it's just serious overdevelopment. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion. It's been moved and seconded, but I have... What's oh, all right? I'm just going to say I've got two other speakers, and I'll put Clive onto the end of that. So I've got John Nock, Jane Mortimer, and Clive... Pearson. 
uh, John. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> when I see the word shepherd hut and holiday homes together, it always seems that the, uh, the owner is trying to evoke a rural idyll of, of, of 120 years ago. And this is a ridiculous misrepresentation of what they are. And that's particularly relevant here. And nothing like shepherd's huts, not, not even glamping pods. They are holiday bungalows and they should be advertised as such. But before then, they should be rejected. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Jane Mortimer. I'll try not to repeat everything that everybody said because I, I agree wholeheartedly, but I do have concerns about the sink, if I can put it that way. It's far too close. Uh, I've got trouble, or the parish council has. Trees have been poisoned, cut back to allow other people's views. Cinder track in my area, which is a long one, uh, I can take you to about 20 trees that have been cut back just to provide views across the country. Mm. Um, they, people don't care. They've got this property that they think they have the right to force a path through or to cut a way through, and that is what's going to happen. If it's far enough away as the presence houses are, you should be fine um, because you can see it from high enough up. But certainly, I think the site of interest would be badly damaged and nobody can stop it happening because it's not going to be protected 24 hours a day. Um, and I know exactly how they've killed trees in my area, but I won't repeat how because who knows. Yeah. But, thank, um, but I'll be uh, certainly voting against this. Thank you. Uh, Clive Pearson. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor John Knock has already said exactly what I was going to say, so I have nothing else to add. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion. Would you like to state the motion, please? Thank you, Chair. So the motion before committee is uh, that planning permission be refused for the reasons set out in the report. Thank you. All those in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you. We'll move on to number six which is 12 Carlton Road, Filey. Mr. Harper, Ms. Harper will present the item. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> right, the first slide just shows you um, the site location. Is a, and the site is in the center of Filey. And it does comprise, at the moment, some industrial units. Um, same, again, just an aerial view of the site. You can see um, the industrial units. Oops. And um, to the east and middle of the site and on the western end, it's just um, a grassed area, which is, at the moment, um, left to grow is just unmanaged. Um, that's the proposed block plan of the site. Um, it shows you on the eastern part of the site is a block of flats, of five flats. The middle, almost at the center of the site, is three terrace dwellings. And to the west of the site is a bungalow. That just um, shows a ground floor plan, just a block of flats and terraced. I just wanted to show the parking arrangements, which have been revised during the course of the application, and, high -risk, and the High Risk Authority is now satisfied with the parking proposed. This um, is the block of flats, the elevation, front elevation. Um, materials would be brick, render, and timber cladding with slate to the roof. You can also, also see um, the block in relation to the neighboring dwellings on Carlton Road. That just shows the elevations of the terrace, the three dwellings, and the bungalow. And this is uh, like a section through the side or elevation the drawings showing really the massing of the flat and what it will look like from the adjacent dwellings. 
I'm just running through some photos. Um, this is the site access of West Road. It goes through um, existing dwellings on West Road and to the rear gardens of the dwellings on Carlton Road. That's within the site. Um, the, the photo on the left looks towards the rear of the properties on Carlton Road. It shows the workshop units on site. Um, the higher, the, the taller of the units would be replaced by the um, block of flats. And the building to the left, that would be demolished. This view is from within the site, um, sh looking towards the rear of Birch Close, where the bungalows are. And the storage building where the tractor is shown in, <laughs> that would be where the um, terrace dwellings would go the two-story height, which would be higher than this building is now. This is to the rear of well, to the west, uh, yeah, western part of the site, looking out from the rear gardens on West Road, which is the grassed area now, and where you see the property on the left, the storage unit is where the, the um, terraced dwellings would go. Again, this is the site showing where the bungalow would sit, and you can see the properties on Birch Close, the bungalows, and the rear gardens. That's the um, view of, into Carlton Road. Um, this is where the workshop units are and you can see that the, these are quite low in comparison to the new block of flats which would sit um, considerably higher than the properties on Victoria Road. And, yep, and the proposal is recommended for refusal um, as it is considered it, it constitutes overdevelopment of the site and therefore offering a poor standard of amenity. It's also considered that the um, design and appearance of the buildings doesn't respond positive to the local context. Um, the scale of the new buildings proposed in relation to neighboring properties is considered um, to be overly dominant. And yeah, that's, that's all. I have nothing further to add to the report. Thank you. Uh, we have a public speaker, Mr. Chris Hall, as agent for the application. Uh, you will have three minutes. You'll be given notice of one minute left, and you can. The clock will start from when you start speaking. You may begin when you wish. The St Richard scheme is appropriate for the area and site in regards to scale, design, and residential amenity. Materials to be used: brick, render, timber cladding, slate roof tile, all currently in existence in Filey actually on the gateway to Farley. The field, Farley Fields Court, same materials. Recently approved three dwellings in the centre in Mitford Street, same materials approved. So why not Carlton Road? We strenuously disagree the scheme causes loss of privacy, overshadowing, loss of light and harm to amenity. Documents submitted this week to evidence the above. It is just not true, and we believe it is incorrect. The submitted scheme removes existing development buildings constructed on neighbouring boundaries, this allowing movement around the site and removing cramped development already in existence on that site. The scheme accords to all highways policies, hence no objections. Farley Town Council had concerns with highways which have now been addressed. There was only four objections from West Road, mainly in regards to access, which have been addressed, hence no highways objections. There has been not one single objection from any resident in Carlton Road or Birch Close. When I was undertaking my survey, residents from Carlton Road actually embraced me and said 
that the new residential development would actually alleviate the noisy deliveries which are undertaken by 7.5 wagons which currently are undertaking delivering to the electrical suppliers. If members of the committee are going to refuse this application today on the officer's report, may I recommend that a site visit is undertaken by the committee members, preferably when you go and visit the Cobble Landing. And then I will be in attendance to show you the merits of this scheme. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll now move on to questions. Any questions from anybody? Mr. John Knock, Councillor John Knock. Thank you, Chairman. It's not a question, it's a, it's a comment. Uh, <clears throat> we read on uh, uh, the, the first reason for the recommendation to, to refuse this application is a good design is required to be demonstrated, and on this occasion, it is not. This is a gross, unpleasant overdevelopment. Thank you, Thank Chairman. You. Councillor Roberta Swires. Thank you, Chairman. I couldn't know this any better because I lived at number two Carlton Road many years ago, I know, but it hasn't altered a lot. That area hasn't altered a lot. I do agree, uh, Sorden's building firm was there and then an electrical firm, and I think over the years it's grown a bit tatty at the end. But what I do agree with is that properties would look good there and it would fill a a place that would definitely change this area, but I think it's far too much overdevelopment of that small area. I think it's overbearing the height. What, what is proposed for that? As I say, I think houses that would mi match what was already there would be indeed an improvement, but I don't, think, I don't feel that with this application at all. Thank you. Councillor Mike Cockrell. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, having lived within a couple of hundred yards for many years in my youth, uh, I was very pleased to hear about uh, a tidying up of the area because mm -hmm. it's crying out for it. Mm -hmm. But having seen the development, uh, I can't support it. I think particularly this was really highlighted by the recent plans that came, was it earlier this week? Yeah. And it shows you they're huge and it's just two bigger developments. The other concern I have is that there is an, uh, a, an access road that is parallel to Carlton Road that comes out onto West Road directly opposite the junior school. And as you're coming out, you've got to actually be on the footpath before you can look down West Road. So I, I, f I was totally amazed when Highway said they had no objection to it. Anybody who knows the area knows that that is very dangerous. So I cannot support. Thank you. Councillor Sam Cross. Thank you. Really just to echo all the thoughts, and I think the interesting thing is when you look at the block plan outside number 40, you know what I mean, what you've got on West Road is the junior school, and that's where the crossings happen. And I think what I would say to is we're going to, you know, maybe do it in the school holidays. This is one of the premises, one of the premises that we should go look at quarter past three on an afternoon and then we can see the number of children, the number of people walking about, and the number of cars in that particular area. Or alternatively, at 10 to 9 on the morning and we can see that it's clearly over development. It's the wrong development in the wrong place. Thank you. Any more comments? No? Does anybody wish to propose a motion? Yes, Councillor. Uh, oh. Uh, move refer, um, refusal as per the application based exactly on what is in here. It's a place that can be developed but not like this. Thank you. Anybody to second? Councillor Sam Cross. Would you state the motion? Thank you, Chair. So the motion before committee is that planning permission be refused uh, as per the recommendation set out in the report. Thank you. All those in favour of the motion? That's unanimous, thank you. Oh, I think, uh, any against? Any abstentions? One abstention. Oh. 
Councillor Cockrell, could you turn your mic off? Your mic, could you turn it off? Thank you. Could you let them know what they've asked? So just to sum up for agenda item six, the resolution of committee is to refuse planning permission uh, in accordance with the recommendation. Thank you. Agenda item seven, planning application 5559 Commercial Street, Scarborough. Planning officer, Mr. Metcalf, will present the item. Thank you, Chair. So this application uh, proposes the demolition of three 20th century asbestos uh, concrete bungalows on Commercial Street, Scarborough, and their replacement with eight two-storey terrace dwellings. What I intend to do is briefly uh, look at the site and its context and what's there currently, then uh, address, uh, look at the proposal and then move on to the, the, the merits of the scheme. In terms of where, where the site is then, uh, of the Sainsbury's supermarket here and the, the, the filling station you can see. We have Commercial Street running uh, north, north to south, which is it's, it's currently a mixture of principally two and three storey dwellings with some factory use on, on, the, on the northern end as well. As I've said, the Sainsbury's shop and the, the, the car park, and you have the, the nursery uh, and play centre here and uh, the beginnings of the cinder track uh, to the back beyond this planted boundary and at the, 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 the site and the, the play area is, is divided by an old wall I would imagine from the time of, of, of the railway um, which is about uh, five foot tall on the application site side and uh, uh, I would estimate maybe eight foot on, on, on the other side. So a slightly closer image, you can see here the roof tops of the three bungalows, so it's these properties here, so the asbestos roofs, the block of flats opposite and existing terrace, terrace dwellings here. You have the access from Commercial Street to Sainsbury's, the pedestrian access, and the beginnings, as I've said, is of the cinder track route here, and you can see the play area uh, uh, associated with the Play Centre Stroke Nursery School, school just there. In terms of the site as it exists, then you can see the three bungalows of it immersed in planting this, this time of the year. So prefabricated buildings of in, in interesting structures. It, it has to be said from the 20th century post-war construction, asbestos roofs and concrete walls. Um, one vacant and I believe two still occupied, but I think that the general feeling is that they are perhaps no longer suitable for habitation. This is looking from the the the, the, area, the cinder track back at the site uh, beyond the planted buffer. There, there's the the, uh, the existing bungalows, but doesn't really show a lot other than that there's a substantial planted boundary between. Uh, the application site and, and the uh, nursery school play space. And a, a, another photograph looking uh, eastwards of, of the bungalow, so that gives members an impression of, of, what's, of what's there currently. In terms of the proposal then, then as I've said, eight two-storey, two-bedroomed terrace dwellings uh, in buff brick with, you can't, not particularly clear on this photograph, but on this uh, drawing rather, uh, but you've got the, the bay windows, which is typical of the street, uh, mm -hmm. artificial stone sills on the windows, a, a brick story band, and it's proposed to be artificial, um, an ornate brick eaves detail, and again, to sort of tie in with the character of the street as it exists. Uh, a slate or slate tight roofing is, is also proposed. Let's look at a site plan. You see each dwelling benefits from a, a, a private amenity space, albeit a relatively small one, although that's consistent with the character of the street generally. The vast majority of properties don't have very big uh, amenity spaces. 
and each is sufficient for the waste bins and perhaps a shed to store a bike and each benefits from um, rear access. So in, in conclusion then, uh, in terms of design, the scheme's considered to be acceptable. Um, officers don't consider that, that there'll be an undue impact on neighbour amenity and the highway, highway authority has latterly uh, withdrawn its objection and uh, agreed that the proposal won't harm the safety and convenience of users of the public highway. Uh, so with that in mind, the recommendation is that consent be granted subject to the, recommend, subject to the conditions rather set out in the report. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, we don't have any public speakers, uh, but before I continue, Councillor Bill Chart, are you familiar enough to, or are you not going to participate? Sorry, Chair, I know the area, but unfortunately, at a certain age, you need to have a break, but I won't participate. Thank you. Right, any questions from anybody? Councillor Jane Mortimer. Thank you. Um, I can understand that the three bungalows need to go. It's asbestos. They're probably built just after the war uh, and definitely modernising. Uh, they are fairly tight together. What's the floor space like inside? Is it up to the national level? Thank you, Chair. I didn't actually mean to mention in the presentation that they are um, in compliance with the nationally described space standards, so they are of a reasonable size. All right, thank you very much. I think it's important that we can do that, uh, ask that question, because if we're not careful, we're building something that eventually um, maybe has to even be taken down because they don't meet that. All right, thank you. Councillor Roberta Swires. Thank you, Chairman. I think this will improve. When you look at the rest of Commercial Street, they're all like this. You know, um, I think they need to go soon as, and I think this will improve it. You know, I mean, there's on-street parking and that, which is, is going to be the case right in the town centre. It will provide homes, you know, for, mm -hmm. for people, and I think it will definitely have a, uh, a nicer effect on that street than what's there, and certainly not do any harm. I would move the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Clive Pearson. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my question has been answered. It was to do with the room sizes to make sure that they were within the new plans. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Phil Kershaw. Yeah, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, these, how, these bungalows were built after the um, bombing of Commercial Street, and in that um, bombing there was four women and three children killed where those, where, where those bungalows are. And I just wondered if we could stipulate that possibly some kind of recognition for that on that site, I don't know, a plaque or a board Would you or like something? To answer? I mean, we could certainly alert the applicant to that and that could be explored but I'd suggest that falls kind of outside anything we could mandate as planning committee but it's certainly something we can sort of raise with the developer and, and, and you know they could seek to, to make some memorial. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Sam Cross. Thank you Chair. Really just a bit of clarification. When we're saying the size of the property are we talking about the minimum acceptable or are we talking about an acceptable size? Well, the, the, the nationally described space standards are the, the, the government's standards that they recommend, uh, um, although they're not actually mandated, but, and, and they ex exceed those. So that, yeah, that if, in terms of the standards that do exist, the, the properties exceed those in, in area. Uh, the, certainly the bedrooms do. Um, yeah, thank you. Chair. Thank you. Are you happy with that? Can I come back, Chair? Yes. I think really, uh, from my own personal view and probably others' personal views, we actually could do with some training on what is actually, you know, minimum, mm. accept, minimum size and acceptable size so that we are actually building and producing properties that are fit for human habitation. Thank you. Mr Walker? Yeah, we could certainly liaise with our colleagues in housing who could come in and do give some advice on that. I think the key thing from the planning position, as Mr Metcalf said, is 
these are, whilst these are nationally described standards that set a kind of, I suppose you could call them a minimum, they are not mandatory. To date, the government hasn't said that everything must comply with those. So that would be something we are looking to tighten up through our own local plan. But, as I say, we can do, we, can, we, we, we could ask the uh, ask housing colleagues to assist us in providing some training for members on that. Thank you. I have two speakers left, Councillor Mike Cockrell and Jane Mortimer, and we have a proposal and a seconder. So after those two, I will be take, going to the vote. Councillor Mike Cockrell. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I think there'll be a, an improvement. And in, with having the benefit of hindsight, we've got a similar development that was built by the same company to a very similar design in Filey maybe five or six years ago, mm. and I think they'd fit in very well. Thank you. Councillor Jane Mortimer. Thank you. The reason I asked about room sizes uh, is because they're not mandatory for private dwellings, but they are mandatory for RSLs and um, sectors, those sectors. And I think it's important that we take those on board, if we possibly can, to ensure that, as uh, Councillor Cross says, that the houses are really fit to live in with meeting that standard uh, and it's a shame it's not mandatory right the way through mm. uh, not only just for rsls but thank you thank you we'll move to a vote would you like to state the motion yes yes so the motion before committee is that planning permission be approved with the conditions as recommended in the report thank you. right all those in favor please raise your hand All those against? Abstentions? Thank you. That motion is carried. Would you like to state the motion? Thank you, Chair. So for Agenda Item 7, Planning Committee is resolved to grant planning permission. Thank you. We move to Planning Application Number 8, Elzino Residential Home 5, 6 Esplanade Garden, Scarborough. Mr Hadfield will present the item. Thank you, Chair. So the item before committee today is for the proposal um, for the change of use of a nursing home um, from a, a conversion from nursing home to 10 residential units at five and six Esplanade Gardens and the replacement of uh, windows to the front elevation from timber frame windows to UPVC frame windows. In terms of the location of the site, the site lies within the designated conservation area of Scarborough and comprises a five-storey um, dwelling which lies within an established residential area of Scarborough. The site also lies opposite the designated Grade 2 listed registered park at the Prince of Wales um, Gardens. Um, so the the proposal essentially so to the to the front of the elevation of the of the development is, is a replacement of the the window so all um, fenestration in the front elevation will be replaced with UPVC windows. The site previously benefits from uh, consent for the replacement of uh, uh, the window at the at the entrance there. So that will eventually be replaced with uh, a timber frame door that already has granted consent for that. Um, there's been uh, to the rear of the site. Well, the, the, sorry, the item was previously deferred. Um, was an item of the previous committee. It's been defer deferred, subject to a site visit, which was taken place earlier on this week. Um, that was to establish the external layout of the bin storage provision to the rear of the site. Uh, following the site visit, it, uh, it's been recommended or uh, suggested by uh, members that um, the agent clarify the um, arrangement of the bin storage, in particular the waste disposal, so how residents would dispose of that um, waste. Um, there's 
no access to the rear of the site for residents living above ground floor level. So essentially the external arrangement as exists would be that the residents would have to, and inhabitants of those residential units would have to um, travel um, down Esplanade to the, uh, ac the access way behind to the rear of the site um, to dispose of the waste there. Um, on recommendation of members, clarification sought from the applicant to determine if there would be the possibility of um, disposing waste in another manner, and the applicant has responded to confirm that um, an external uh, contractor um, providing cleaning services to the, the, the management of the uh, company would be um, an acceptable solution that that, that would um, take place to dispose of um, uh, the waste in that, in that manner, so that would save residents from having to walk um, around the site and uh, around Esplanade to dispose of it um, in that manner. Um, there have been uh, uh, no objections to the proposal um, from the Council's environmental health uh, team um, or highways. Um, the, in fact, the, the Council's residential um, regulation manager rec has recommended um, uh, appropriate commercial bins um, in the form of two blue and two green um, 1100 litre storage bins to the site and the, the applicant has also agreed to amend the plans um, to have those uh, stored within the site. Um, it's demonstrated uh, ground floor level in the amenity space uh, just, to the, just to the rear of the site in the rear amenity space here. Site also includes um, bicycle storage as well within that amenity space. Um, the, there's been no further objections from the council's environmental health department or highways. Um, no significant external development will take place on the site, um, and therefore it's your officer's recommendation that the development be approved, uh, subject to the attached conditions within the report. Thank you. Chair. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, Councillor Phil Trumper. Uh, thank you, Chair. Do you have a, a closer image of the, uh, of the UPVC window? This is as close as to zooming in as the, the software is allowing me to, I'm afraid, but... Um, essentially, it's a scheme that's been, or a specification that's been um, similarly approved further along the uh, Esplanade Gardens to, at, at Maynard Hotel. Um, at a site visit, during the site visit, um, members were, were shown the specification that's been installed in the, in the site. Um, uh, it's an eco slide conservation style uh, sliding sash specification. So, the, the, this specification has been previously. Um, approved in, within the area um, is considered acceptable um, in, in this case. Just for your benefit, we did see one of the windows because it was of concern to Councillor Sam Cross last time and they were very, very good. In fact, as we walked by, it had to be pointed out that they weren't wood and they were a very, very good blend, uh, if that helps at all. Uh, I have Councillor Richmore. Thank you, Chair. I need a, just a point of clarification, then, if I may, because it seemed that you said that there was um, to be an outside waste management contractor or who would be employed to, to take rubbish round, the, round to the yard from each of these flats. That's what it sounded like, what you said. So could you just be absolutely clear what that means, please? Thanks. Thank you. Yes, so as part of the... The, the site of the development itself comprises two studio flats at ground floor and basement floor uh, levels. Um, those were for those have been those will be advertised for the holiday let markets as part of um, the arrangement internal and external arrangement to dispose of their waste to avoid um, uh, occupiers on a holiday disposing of their waste that manner. An external contractor would have already uh, uh, been confirmed by the applicant that an external contractor cleaning service would dispose of their waste to save um, people holidaying in those in those flats from disposing of it themselves 
um, following the site visits earlier on in the week and recommendations from the, from the members or clarifications from the members, um, the applicant has confirmed that they would use those same contractors to dispose of the waste um, um, produced by the residents in the, uh, the, the remaining residential flats. Councillor Richmond, did you want to come back? Yeah, please, because um, I need to understand how that might work. Does that mean that we'd be asking residents to put bin bags full of washed up tuna cans and what have you outside their flat doors for a number of days, or is that a, a, a daily cleaning maintenance schedule? I mean, what's going to happen is, is residents right at the top there, are they going to fill their bins, pop them outside the, their front door of their flat, and then by the next morning, they will be taken away by a cleaning contractor to the commercial bins. Am I reading that right? Thank you. Thank you. So yes, in, in terms of the specific detail, the applicant hasn't gone into the specific detail of how that would be arranged, simply to state that um, a contractor would um, be collecting the waste um, on, on a frequent basis and it essentially save the traversing from a, a, an internal resident from walking around the site to the, to the rear of the site. So they'd be disposing in the same manner, manner for the um, permanent residents of, of um, those flats, um, the same manner that, that, that they would be disposing of in the case of the, those that would be renting the holiday flats. Um, in terms of our, how we would um, kind of enforce that and create a, a planning mechanism for that would be um, rel relatively limited, but um, in it, there could be scope to condition um, perhaps something like a, a waste management plan as part of any approval um, so that would uh, the onus or the obligate there would be an obligation in terms of the the agent to submit um, a waste management plan to describe how um, in in detail how they would um, dispose of that waste in that in that instance if that would be uh, at the committee's pleasure just to clarify, I assume changeover for the holiday flats would be twice a week, and I'm assuming that the most convenient way is to tell everybody on those two days by a certain time to put their rubbish out and they will collect them on those two days. I can't see it being reasonable to expect seven days a week facility being open, but perhaps twice a week would be sufficient to be able to do that. Could something like that be written in as part of their waste management plan? I might defer yes. to my colleague, superior there. Yeah, I, I, I think as we kind of articulated at the, the, the previous meeting that saw the site and deferred and the site visit, this is one of those areas where knowing how far the, the planning decision can creep into sort of micromanaging residents' behaviour is, 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 is a difficult one. What, what, what I think I would suggest, and I think we'd probably need to seek a little bit of legal advice just to, to give ourselves comfort that we, we, we're not overreaching is we could or committee could choose to require a condition that uh, effectively provides details on how effectively waste collection within the property would be managed and therefore that would uh, require the applicant to submit details and we could then perhaps in you know conjunction with the chair and you know to say ward councillors ascertain the degree to which yeah. that is acceptable. I think we have to be, we have to be fair in that. Um, you know, I think as you alluded to, to expect kind of daily or over frequent use. These are relatively modest flats, so they're not going to be, you know, families living you know, living in them. So I think the amount of refuse created won't be, you know, from individual flats won't be excessive. Um, there would obviously be nothing to stop people going and di disposing of the rubbish in the bins of their own volition, as I think we saw yeah. households were and businesses were doing while we were on the site visit. So this kind of perhaps will give a degree of comfort. There's that little bit more that we're expecting from the management of the property. As I say, without it, well, as I say, we can we can at least require the submission of details. It gives us a de degree of control. As I say, the the difficulty in planning terms is. You know, we, could, we can ask the property and the management company to do this. Ultimately, if individuals decide, you know, do things that they're not meant to do in any event, we've no kind of control over that. And yeah. frankly, neither of the the, the the property owners. Ultimately, this is, you know, the, you know, 
you know, I think one can only assume that the I think these will be good quality properties. Perhaps the, um, the, the there'll be a degree of proprietorship or you know the, the, either combination of high quality holiday accommodation or people living in them. There will be an onus on them to want to maintain the quality of that environment, be that the you know the shared interiors or or the properties themselves. So I think we, as I say, that's that's an avenue open to committee, uh, as I say, and then that would perhaps give us an opportunity to draw some more information from from, from the applicant and mm -hmm. see if there's a, you know, the, 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 the architecture of an acceptable system in place. But as I say, we, it, it, this is nibbling at the edges to, to what planning can kind of meaningfully command, because as I say, ultimately, this would require, whatever system's in place, it needs residents, holidaymakers to, to, to play ball and that's you know that, that that in fairness is out with the the perfect control of the uh, of the property owners so this is we we you know we we we've sort of invited the applicant to address this head on they've come up and in fairness to them i would say we were only able to make the request after the site visit on monday and i know the agent's been on leave so we've we only got a response this morning so we in fairness then we've not a chance to have any particular dialogue on this so that's why I say if, they've, if, if this is something members feel particularly strong about that condition and the subsequent fleshing out of the details might be the avenue to, to go down. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Sam Cross. Thank you, Chair. I'm looking at 1-1 here and it says 10 number residential flats. It doesn't say holiday flats. It says residential flats. We're granting permission for residential flats. You know what I mean? Not holiday flats. You know what I mean? And that, to my mind, if, you're going to, if we're going to agree this, it should say holiday flats, and there should be no further use other than holiday flats. You know what I mean? You stated that there were going to be holiday flats. Well, it wants stating in the report and in the planning permission that it should be holiday flats, and therefore holiday use only. Uh, but go on. Would you like to answer that? Yeah, I was going to say. I mean, ultimately, the, the the application is seeking consent for the conversion to residential accommodation. The applicants indicated that a couple of the units would be for holiday use, but in terms of their size, that you know, there's no. I would suggest there's no practical reason why we would require it to be holiday accommodation. In instances where we have conditioned holiday use, it tends to be. The holiday, you know, the holiday parks, you know, the Am the Amtree parks and, 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 and such like, where effectively they are areas where residential use in and of its own right would not not be encouraged. As I say, there have been uh, some occasions in the past where, because of the the very s small nature of converted properties, we might say they're not suitable for permanent accommodation. I would suggest that's not the case in this instance. Um, Hence, as I say, I think ultimately the decision before members is, is the application has submitted, which is ostensibly for the creation of that, that particular number of, 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 of apartments, for want of a better term, with no, no holiday restriction per se. Yes, Councillor Cross. Yeah, really then, I'm, I'm going to go on from there. We're, we're have, I visited the site again today. I walked round the back. And, you know, this... You know, how's it going to work? Collecting rubbish is absolutely a, a bit of a joke. They're going to come round and collect it every time because that's the only thing that, that's not going to happen. What they're going to end up doing, they're going to end up slinging it out of windows. You know what I mean? The, the site is not big enough for the amount of rubbish that would be actually on there. Um, what we're seeing here is it's a rushed job here and... You know, it, the wind at the places are too small. We're talking about quality sized housing. And you know what I mean? It's okay if they're small and it's holiday flats, but if they're going to be permanent flats, they ought to be a required size. And when you look at the property, it's a tall, thin property. They're banging two flats on every floor, and it's just way over development of this property. It's not good for the environment. And when you look around the back, it's just developing a ghetto in that area. So I'll be voting against it. And, you know, if it were up to me, I'd refuse it, point blank. Thank you. Thank you. Could you comment upon the space for each flat, whether they conform to any minimum standards? So the 
So, so the internal spaces, I, I have to say, I'm not entirely sure if they do con uh, confirm or um, comply or not. Um, but what I would say is that um, during the first iteration, uh, which came before uh, committee originally last month, during that internal arrangement, the consultation with the council's residential um, regulation managers uh, raised no objections to the sizes and spaces of the internal arrangement. Um, they originally um, made a, uh, an objection to the basement uh, level uh, flat to the back due to a lack of um, natural light in the window spaces. Um, an amended plan was received during that first uh, consultation period and they did amend the plans to open up um, uh, the window space to the back. Um, and following the amendments, uh, the council's uh, consultation responded with no objection and they were satisfied with the, the amendments that were made. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's where, where they okay, stand on, thank you. on the tax space. Councillor Phil Trumper. It's uh, back to rubbish, I'm afraid. Um, just in regards to the, the, the waste management, I mean, we talked about leaving it outside at the front. Is that that's correct? No, um, I think what's mentioned is what we would be hoping to achieve is that on a certain by a certain time on a certain day, perhaps twice a week, the flats tie up their rubbish and leave it outside the door, and somebody who will, part of the management team will collect it and take it around the back to put it in the bin. That's a big improvement on what exists at the moment because at the moment people who have flats next to them and all along that side take their own rubbish out through the front door and walk all the way to the top around and back and that's how it's done so this would be a real improvement in terms of how the rubbish is disposed of at the moment. Is that it? I'll go on to the Next person, which is Bill Chad. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I would have expected a bit of a resolution, not not a compromise, and a massive compromise that we're hoping somebody's going to turn up to pick your rubbish up to take it round the back. The it's reality a... is that people are, are basically born idle. They'll find something else to do with the rubbish apart from do that little walk round there to put it in there. There has been massive issues in that area for years of people putting their domestic rubbish into public bins. Right. We should be saying to them, you need an access from the inside of the building to the storage yard. We have not achieved anything. I couldn't go on the visit, unfortunately. I had to be somewhere else. Mm. But like Councillor Cross, I went up there and had a look. It's a long way to walk. You're coming from the top of a block of flats down with a bag of rubbish. You're going to leave it there for maybe one or two days. In this mm. weather, one or two days is a long time. My wife won't let the rubbish stay in the house for that long, but I've only got 10 yards to walk to my bin. With this here, you need to be an Olympic athlete. I'm sure Councillor Moore there on his, on his motorbike could get there in five minutes, but I think anybody who's, who's got limited mobility would totally struggle to do that. I wouldn't want to live with that kind of smell under my nose or outside my door, especially in the summertime. I think this, this is not a compromise. This is a total step down. This might work in places like London, but we're not London, we're Scarborough. We should look for better. And personally speaking, I'll be supporting Councillor Cross. Thank you. Councillor Roberta's wires. Thank you. I'm yeah. going off that little subject for a minute. So um, what, what I want to ask is, you know, we've got the report in front of us, and I, I read it last time, and had a, a rant. Um, has anything changed? Bedroom one appears to have no windows. They've got to have windows. There's got to be a window somewhere. Um, and the lounge looks small, but it should be at least 2.2 metres to meet the required standard. Isn't it that? Or has anything changed within the size of these flats? Mm. You know? Has anything altered, in other words, since the last time? Have, have these, has this been updated, or is it just the same as the report last time? Thank you. Yep, so the, 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 the original plans submitted were amended, not, but they were um, to allow um, an additional window, um, or an increase in the window size on the, on the basement level floor. Um, and as... as um, mentioned in response to the previous question, 
the, the, the council's uh, environmental health department of the, of ultimately have no objections in terms of the in internal arrangement of the site. Um, and, and in terms of in terms of what what your officers can assess, we we, we can assess the suitability of an internal arrangement. But ultimately, the the, the specialisation is with um, those consultees that we consult, um, and that in their professional expertise, they determine that the, the internal arrangement um, is acceptable and suitable for the provision of those internal of, of those inhabitants. Um, and and yet yeah, the, the plans before you are the amended plans from the original. Um, Submission in response to the uh, in response to the uh, environmental health's original um, objection to that that site. Would you like to come back on that? Yes, please. Right. Okay. So it is a great shame because this is a beautiful property, and what a shame they're wasting it with not thinking really of the health and well-being of that person that has to live there. Um, Mr. Walker, sorry, it's just. It, I guess it's just to, to, to clarify the situation as I understand it. I mean, certainly at the last meeting, the application was was deferred, and the two reasons were for the. Well, at that time, it was confirmed there was capacity for waste, effectively the bins in the rear yard, and uh, the details of the windows. Now, obviously, we've 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 addressed the windows and kind of show, shown examples and. Up until well, we we got clarification that there was capacity in that rear yard. At the site visit, uh, this issue about the collection and accessibility came up. So obviously, since then we have sought to engage with the with the applicant on that very it, that issue in that very narrow period of time. To and as I say, they've they've come back with this, um, you know, in principle proposal to come up with some management systems. That was just 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 to clarify, kind of. We, we, you know, we, we, we hadn't got a steer from members to go to committee to go back and negotiate room sizes and such like. As I say, the two reasons were waste related and that I say that window detail. So just to, I didn't want that to look like the, the applicant had dug the heels in about a particular change we, we, we you know, we, 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 we've been expecting. Thanks. Right, I've got uh, Councillor Jane Mortimer. Thank you. I think it was important that we did go on that site visit to see exactly what was happening. The windows are fine, absolutely brilliant. They can't see any problem with them whatsoever. It is definitely the fact that you have to walk a long distance to get rid of your own rubbish properly. I know it's done because we met people doing it quite, if not happily, they were doing it regularly themselves. I'm just, it is a shame that the agent, I think, is away or has been away because what I'd like to do is try and get it so there is a need for houses, there is a need for flats, um, smallish flats where you can get in as a starter or you, you can, it is a starter home, basically, and there is a huge need for those. It's how we organise and get the collection of waste and disposal of waste sorted out. And that was what we were hoping to do. I think the bins outside are the right volume to doing it, um, because we've got no problem from my environmental health to do it. What I'd like to suggest is, one, that if we pass it, it does have a condition that any waste disposal has to be agreed by the officers with input from local councillors about how it's done. In my area, uh, certainly down Bay, all the rubbish is mostly left outside once a week or taken by hand to a disposal unit up um, Albion Road. That's the only way it can be picked up. There is no space for bins. So, but it's not maybe something that you really want when you're living in flats. These are houses that leave them outside. Can we, I know it sounds weird, just put this on deferral again, just to get back to the agent to see if there's any way they can manage another entry or another access to the rear of the property so that residents can come down and get rid of their own. 
in the space that is allocated to them, because I think that space is big enough. So, I was just going to say, um, yeah, thanks for the thanks for the question. The that that was that um, proposal was put to the agent, um, and the correspondence was. Um, uh, there was no response to that element of the of the request, so my inkling would be that they would not be amenable to that kind of um, arrangement. Um, ultimately, they've ultimately in term that they've provided a, a amenity storage to the rear. It's secure. Um, it's um, it meets the guidance provided by environmental health in terms of literage and um, what can be reasonably expected. Um, in, same, in terms of the, the waste that would be um, produced within the flats. Um, they've submitted a, a, a member previously to, to meet um, build, uh, building regulations in terms of the window sizes and again um, in terms of um, uh, um, highlighting that uh, an external contractor will be there to um, take away waste um, but I, I, I would be hesitant to um, maybe suggest that there would perhaps um, accept a, a further compromise in terms of the waste disposal, particularly as it's a, a, a similar arrangement to what exists within um, the neighbouring sites and the in and around Esplanade and Esplanade Gardens. Thank you. Did you want to say something? No, okay. I've got quite a few people wanting to speak, so I'll just give you a list of who's on my list. There's. Uh, Glenn Goodbury next, John Mock, Paul Riley, Rich Moore, Sam Cross, and Mike Cockerell. I'll be taking them in that order. I'll add you on to it as well. So, Glenn Goodbury next. Yes? Sorry, I forgot. You can go in first then, Phil Kershaw. Phil Kershaw and then Glenn Goodbury. Phil, do you want to speak? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies, Chair. I thought I was going to be the last. <laughs> um, yes, um, I, I too was surprised about the waste disposal issue on the site visit. And I, I've never lived in a flat, so I don't know what is the norm. But it didn't to, seem to me to be acceptable, that long walk um, around um, the top of the building and back down the alleyway and all that kind of thing. And with respect, Chair, I think the assumption that there'll be change over twice a week. I think that's your assumption. I'm not sure that holiday flats are changed twice a week. I don't know. I usually hire a flat for a week, but there you go. Um, so I agree with everything that's been said about the waste. I'm, I'm sure there must be a better solution to that. Uh, but my question is on the actual plans. As I understand it, it's a, it's a planning application for eight two-bedroom flats and two studio flats. When I look on the plan, on the um, first floor flat, I can only see one bedroom that's actually labelled bedroom two, but nevertheless it's a single bedroom at the front. Um, similarly with the second floor, there's only one bedroom that's labelled bedroom two, again, I don't know where bedroom one is. And the, similarly with the third floor at the back, there's only one bedroom. And I just wondered, whether this is a rushed application in some way, whether there's been a lot of thought given to it, or they're just trying to cram everything into it. Could you explain that? Yes, so um, thank you for the question. So it looks like um, having a, a, a reappraisal of the, or reassessment of the plans, it does look like um, uh, the member is correct in that assertion. So the, the full breakdown of the flats is as follows. Mm. Um, five one-bed flats and five two-bed flats. Um, but in terms of the internal um, intentions for those, those inhabitants, so as previously mentioned, the uh, basement and the ground floor studio flats, the one-bedroom flats would be advertised for holiday let rental. In, term, in terms of the um, identification of those rooms, it, it's, it looks like a, an agent error on their behalf that that those rooms have been mislabeled um, because it's, it's, it's been rightly pointed out that um, on a couple of the identification of a couple of the flats, they've uh, in a couple of cases been labelled as two two bedrooms, whereas 
Um, it's in fact a, a, a one bedroomed a one bedroom flat, so that's that's a correct um, assessment. It looks like a mislabel from the the agent, but um, uh, this yeah, essentially the, the full breakdown of the flats is that there'll be five one bed flats and five two bed flats. The five one bed, do, do they include two studio flats? Because that's very different to having a bedroom and a lounge. That's right. So in terms of th those flats that have been identified, they would also be, um, by, the, by the looks of the assessment of the plans, that they would also be uh, studio flats. Um, they come a company with a lounge um, and kitchen and bathroom facilities. So have we got two studios and three one-bedroom flats? Yes. Yeah. Right. Now, are we happy that we've got mislabeling on the plans, which says one-bedroom, and yet they refer to them as two bedrooms. Would that, I don't want suddenly somebody turning a one bedroom flat and saying it's a two bedroom flat and being able to get away with it. Essentially it's a, um, a misidentification on behalf of the agent. Um, within the plans they have identified this, well they've color coded the specific and individual flats. Um, the self-contained flats themselves um, but in the case of in the instance of this um, third story flat here, um, it's been colour coded to identify it is a self contained flat. But instead of identifying this bedroom as bedroom number one, to identify it's just a one it belonging within that um, self contained flat, they've actually labelled it number two. Not identifying that's necessarily for two people, but it's actually a, a the second bedroom within that flat. But actually, it's just a, a single um, bedroom flat within a single bedroom room within that flat. Did you want to say something immediately? Or shall I put you on your list for? No, I was going to say if. If the plans are coming to the committee, that are incorrect. I mean, it's well spotted by Councillor Kershaw. I mean, surely, um, I think Councillor Mortimer's point of a deferral is, is quite reasonable in this respect. Um, we shouldn't be looking at plans that aren't properly, that are, mm -hmm. we should have correct plan, we should have accurate plans coming to this committee to make an objective decision. And I think, again, you know, we shouldn't be, uh, we should be looking for and making sure that we get everything that is 100%, it's excellent that it comes to this committee, rather than something that's substandard and amateurish mm. in this case. So, I mean, I would support Councillor Mortimer's, Mortimer's proposal as a deferral and, and second that. And I think it should go away and come back again. What do you want to say? Yeah, I, I, I guess I'd, I'd, I'd you know, t take on board what, what, what the councillor says. I guess what I'd say is, this is, this is it's a labelling error, not an error per se in the plans themselves. It's simply a number two, you know, a number two has appeared. I, you know, it doesn't substantively alter the scheme, but I appreciate it's uh, not helping members necessarily get a, a, a handle on the proposal. In, in that case, it should, it should correct. That it needs to be properly and correct to come to this committee. I will I say, I'll take, well, as I say, I think in planning terms, it's in, in terms of the information it was relaying, it is, there's no, no reason to assume it's not correct. As I say, what has happened, it's, it's, it's a labelling error. So I'd, in, in planning terms, that wouldn't be something that would invalidate the application per se. But like I say, it's, it's for members to, to take a position on the, uh, on, on the decision. I do understand what you're saying, and I feel those same concerns, because it's making a straightforward application look confusing. And I'm worried as to exactly where it's going to end up. I think we'll just have to take a vote on it. We've had a, a motion for deferral, we've had it seconded, but we want to be precise on what basis we're doing this for, if that's going to go ahead. I was going to say, if I could just, just amplify that, it would be very helpful for officers to have a very clear articulation of the issues members feel need to be addressed, you know, effectively pending the application coming back. What I don't want to do is come back with, you know, 
the plan that's got a bedroom label amended yeah. and then there's other issues. I think we need to be clear so that ultimately the committee can take a decision on this, this application. So I'd, I'd just ask for that, Steve, yeah. from the committee. Councillor Jane Mortimer. Well, if it's deferred, they can get the numbers right. To me, it doesn't really matter, the, but it is a bit slipshod that they've misnumbered the bedrooms. We, mm. we know it's what it is, which is so many two and so many studios and so many one bedrooms. But I think for me, it's trying to sort out how the rubbish is handled. Mm. We were saying if we pass it, we need a condition on it to say, how is it going to be done? I don't like doing that particularly. Um, I really would like it if you could go back and say the committee or um, try and reinforce the fact that the committee don't like that idea and would prefer that something was organised internally to allow rubbish to be taken downstairs by the flat holders as and when necessary. So we've got two things. One is making sure the flats are numbered correctly for the bedrooms, and number two, some kind of, of a, a real plan about how the waste is disposed of. They're the two issues. Am I correct in that? Yeah, Councillor Richmore. Thank you, Chair. I think it's, it's essential. If it is to be deferred, then we've got to have a, a real reason why we sit down next time with a view to perhaps passing. Or rejecting. Or rejecting. Now... For me, it simply is unacceptable that we rely on a condition for a waste management plan that may or may not be in effect in years down, to, down the line. We as a committee right now have an obligation to make sure that the back alleys of Ramsill are started to clear up their act. If you go down a back alley, any, most of the back alleys in Ramsill, you're going to see lines and lines of wheelie bins. After week one, those wheelie bins are full. Mm. and they've got to stay there for another week. So what happens is, is residents go down with their bags, pop them on top of the wheelie bins, the seagulls get in there, and there's chaos. And my inbox is filled with it, and I have to go to officers to try and get that remedied. So the application has put forward a, um, a plan to put these big commercial-style bins. Well, I'm not sure whether SPC collects those, so I'd need clarification on they whether do. or not SPC collect those style of bins, because on the one way, that does alleviate part of the problem. But more importantly for me, there's a communal staircase in this application that seems to go from the top floor right through to the ground. Now, the application seems to be squeezing in as much as they can with, with regards to how many uh, flats they can get in this property. If this application were to look at the ground floor plan with a view to making a communal space there, so access from all the flats upstairs can come downstairs onto a communal area ground, on the ground floor, put a door into the backyard so that residents can put their own um, waste into those bins, then that's the kind of deferral that we should be putting back. Anything less than that, then I don't see the point, and we should just be looking to move a motion of, of not accepting it. Thank you. Sorry, I, I, that, that, that's very helpful clarification. I guess the one point I would stress is that the literage requirements, we would have to be um, heavily advised by our colleagues in you know, the waste collection. And ultimately, if what is proposed in terms of capacity meets their requirements, I would suggest planning committee would be in a difficult position to say more was necessary. So you know, all, all the other comments I take on board. Um, ultimately, if the, the council's policy as a kind of uh, you know, waste collection agency is a certain literage per, per unit or whatever, and an application complies with that, I think we're, you know, we, 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 we're, we're difficult to kind of to override that. The other, issue, the other issues are helpful. But as I say, if the, if, the, if the application is deferred, we can, again, have further discussions with our colleagues. In, right. in can this. I just get some clarification from this committee? This is getting very, very long drawn out, and we must be precise in what we want, because it'll be a second deferral. One, we want the win, uh, bedrooms uh, noted exactly. Number two, Councillor Richmore says, the only thing that is acceptable, and the only question we should ask is, will you enable access from the flat through the downstairs directly onto the backyard. That means we don't bother asking if an alternative is 
presentable and being presented to us as to whether we should look on that direction. I think that would be false. We should demand that as being our ideal, but we shouldn't be with not listening to what possible they can put forward. So we ask that question and say, can we have a physical access to the rear yard for everybody? But if they suggest other things, we should listen to what they are and present them to the committee. Is that okay? Yes, yes Councillor Fug. Thanks, Chair. Could I ask one other thing that, um, when I look at these plans, um, there's no dimensions on them. Now, when you look at that basement area where the bins are going to go, it doesn't look to me like those bikes and those bins are going to fit in. But I can't say that for sure because no. there's no dimensions on there. Could we ask that the, at least that area on the plans has the dimensions on so we can actually see that things fit? Because if we, as it is, accept that, OK, we're going to have nine bikes and four bins there, when I look at that, without those dimensions, I'm thinking, well, how are those three end bikes going to be? How are you going to get those bikes in and out? Because mm. it just doesn't look like it will work. Mm. And I think dimensions, certainly in that area, would help. OK, Thank so you. we're adding dimensions to that as well. Councillor Cross, is it to do with this deferral? Yeah, yeah, yes, it is, Chair. Really, um, I agree totally, 100% with what has been said. Um, I'm just going to ha- labour on about the whether it is acceptable size rooms or minimum size rooms. You know what I mean? We should be building quality. That is our duty to build quality houses and get quality products for our residents going forward. So, you know what I mean? That's the other thing. As you said, there's no dimensions uh, on. Um, I think a look inside might be useful as well, Chair, if it was possible, and then we could see a look inside the property and then we could see the actual size and how the rooms were being compartmented. Uh, and the other thing is the split between holiday and residential. You know what I mean? Because one minute we're told it's holiday, next minute we're told it's residential. And one minute they've got five flats that, um, that have got one bedroom, then it's eight flats, then it's two, you know what I mean? And we're, we're getting so many stories here. We want a proper application to actually look at and assess. You know what I mean? We shouldn't be saying, there's some bedrooms missing here, they're not labelled right. You know what I mean? We should have a proper application to this committee. I don't want it to come back next month. I don't want it to come back until we've got answers to this. And to be quite honest, if we're in the stairway, I don't think we should be saying anything at all, really. I think we should be, you know, chucking it out. You know what I mean? Because all you need to do is go down back of that street and it's a mess. It's a ghetto. You know what I mean? And that's what we're going to create. We're going to create more ghettos. And I know they've man- managed to get planning permission on number five or whatever. You know what I mean? But, you know, we want to make sure the job is done right or it's not done at all. Thank you, Chair. Just to add to that, so we are going to address the bedrooms as part of this deferral. We're going to ask the question about disposal or a management and see what they come back to us by but I don't think it's in our power to change the laws of the land. We are going to have to accept there are some things we just can't do. And I don't think there's any legality to us enforcing certain sizes for private residences. We would like them to be that, and we don't know if that's the case, and it may well transpire that they conform to minimum sizes, but we have no power to make a private accommodation accord to minimum size standards. Am I right in that? We have the yeah. power to pass planning or not. You're right. You we can, know what I mean? we that's can... why I've come away from work today yeah. and lost half a day's wages yeah. and the job, and so it is out within our power. Yeah, it is within our power to refuse to pass this. It is in the power of the applicant to go for an appeal and then we may well find ourselves being fined, as we were on Green Lane, £17,000. It isn't as simple as saying it is this or that. So, but that's not where we're at at the moment. Those are the specifics of this deferral. Is everyone happy with the specifics of the deferral? What do you want to add to it? Thank you, Chair. Uh, I want a simple question answering, very simply. Apart from the studio apartments, is the application for eight two-bedroom? 
That will be answered, yeah? No. When this comes back to us, right. it will be explicit okay. how many bedrooms I, and how many flats. I was prepared to accept deferral for clarification on that. Yeah. But because of the officer said some time ago that the applicants had been approached about altering the waste disposal and they won't have anything to do with it, I would just recommend... No, they have it. come back with a compromise. Yes, could you clarify? Can, can I just clarify a couple of matters? Because I, 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 I'm conscious we, uh, I don't want the applicant to be, you know, seeing this and feeling it, it being misrepresented. In terms of the plans, they were obviously all scale plans. So, you know, had, had, had we received notice, you know, we could have done measurements and provided that. So the fact it's, it's not common practice for all plans to show floor areas. So that's something that, you know, we, we, we effectively we could work out from from the plans before us. So that's not a deficiency in terms of the application. Um, gosh, what was the other point? I don't know. <laughs> it's you never told me. Yes, it was the, that, that bin story. As I say, the, the nuance of this, this issue about direct rear access only emerged following the site visit on Monday. So in fairness to the applicant, as I say, the agent has been away, so all we got was a very quick response this morning on return. They've not necessarily had full opportunity to, you know, to consider the matter because that wasn't that wasn't an issue that was aired at the previous but meeting. That, it was very much not, about that's not what the officer told this meeting. No, what he said is we we, we, we put to them, would you consider um, effectively creating an internal route through or some kind of management? They provide a response in, we'd look at management side of things. I don't think they've categorically said we wouldn't do the other. And I think that's just an important distinction to make. It, you know, I don't want to make it look like we've sort of made an ultimatum and they've said no. We've, you know, had a very quick exchange of emails since, but, since right. a, 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 an issue raised that the, the site going, is it. Going back onto the bedrooms then, could I ask why at 1.2 in the report it specifically states eight would be two bedroom units and the two remaining will be studios. So we're not getting correct information. No, no I, I told Mantle that's, that's, that's an error in terms of the report and clearly we've, we've kind of taken labels from the, 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 the plans and put that within the report. And as I say, if, if they- Oh, come on, you check things like that. That's just basic common sense. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I, 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 I acknowledge that. And as I say, we'll, you know, if, if the item is deferred, we'll make sure that's, that's uh, abundantly clear. But as I say, I just wanted to avoid this being, you know, looking like the applicants playing hardball in that really, as I say, we, we, the, the issues that saw the dis decision deferred last time were specifically the window and the capacity of the rear yard. Now, clearly, other issues have emerged at Monday's site visit and today, which, as I say, in fairness to the applicant, they've not had a great deal of time to respond to, and they may be amenable to to, to, to making amendments, having you know seen, seen this debate, so I think it's you know if members are minded to defer, we've got a clear shopping list of the issues to address, and that would you know we 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 we, we can undertake to do that. Yeah. Yes, it is very much so, and really, I have to thank Councillor Phil Kershaw as being the person who spotted it. I didn't spot it, and it seems nobody else did. Uh, Right, we're moving to a deferral. Yes. I just have one uh, observation on, uh, it's to do with the windows. The windows are absolutely fantastic where they're gonna put in. But if you have a look at the second and third floor uh, lintels, they're in a disgraceful state. They're probably the worst in the whole of the street. And all I'm worried about is if they collapse, will they, and it's in conservation, Will they be put back in exactly the same style as they are now? That's a question. Could you answer that? Yes, we'd certainly seek to ensure that was the case, so there was a match both within the property and with its neighbours. Right. We'll move to a vote on the deferral. Would you stay? Um. <laughs> Right, I, I say the motion is to defer. I will, um, I've got a number of bullet points here. What I'll undertake to, I'll, I'll review the recording and make sure I've captured all, all the issues. So, um, uh, and if need be, just double check with the chair as well, because okay. I'm conscious I've got a, 
a big long list here, and I don't want to resolve something that turns out we overlook. So it's essentially, the motion is to defer, and we'll uh, obviously come back in due course, having conferred with various parties. Thank you. Thank you. So all those in favour of deferral, please raise your hands. That's, uh, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay. Would you that's like to? Deferred. It's deferred. <laughs> Thank God for that. Right. It's number nine now. Thank you, Luke. Planning application allotments Ray of Gildercliff, Scarborough. Mr. Metcalf will present the item. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, this application relates to uh, an area of land of approximately 3,850 square metres to the east of uh, Gildercliff in the Barrowcliff area on the open space within the Barrowcliff area. And the proposal is to change the area from an area of public open space to uh, uh, an allotment okay. area. Just in terms of where we are, this is the piece of land here. So you can see the, the Gildercliff, uh, well, you can see it marked on the plan, you can see the open space, you can see the pigeon loft area here, and to the north of that, there's the, the, the rest of the, the Barrowcliff open space. Now, this area did used to be allotments, but it reverted to uh, uh, just broadly accessible public open space when demand for allotments uh, waned. That's now grown again, and there is, again, need for them and uh, this, hence this proposal bringing forward uh, uh, the, the 3,000, well around 4,000 square metres of allotment space. This is just a plan showing the precise area. One thing I, I will note, point out is that the, the area of fencing that you've read about in the report and, and we'll see, we'll have seen on the plans, that's already been installed under the permitted development rights so that, that exists, uh, that exists. So this is simply for the change of use. This is just a basic, I suppose, schematic drawing showing how the allotments might be laid out. So you've got a series of full-size plots and then uh, some, some smaller ones. In terms of its merits, on, on its, its planning merits, um, uh, it's the relevant policy, the, the open space policies of the local plan, both public open space and allotments are uh, promoted and supported, and you're substituting one for one for the other, so there is general support for the proposal and the recommendation is that the scheme be approved uh, as per the report. But one caveat, the, the, ex, the public expiry date doesn't, uh, well, it doesn't, the consultation period doesn't expire till the 18th of this month, uh, so that the recommendation, is an amendment to the recommendation that uh, members grant officers delegated authority to approve the application subject to uh, no new and sub substantive issues coming forward in the remaining consultation period. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there are no public speakers, so we'll go on to comments. And then I have uh, Councillor Bill Chat first. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I just wanted to say, actually, um, a bit of a bumpy start. Uh, the Residents Association were not involved, but as soon as that was mentioned, uh, my fellow colleague, Councillor Kershaw and I, got a meeting with the council and um, I've got to be honest, I think that they've come up with a really good plan now. The Residents Association are really on this. There's a piece of land at the top of the plan, um, talking to Paul Thompson and Matthew Smart. They're on about maybe doing that to plant some uh, fruit trees mm. so local people can go pick the fruit. And the Residents Association have had a path directed around the outside because it's a good dog walk for people. The reasons why it stopped being allotment was simple. It was getting vandalised all the time. It was not enclosed. People could get access and it caused a lot of vandalism. The new fencing and whatever in there is absolutely fantastic. And uh, the residents now are saying, great thing, absolutely great. Um, totally for it. And, and the thing I love most is that Matthew Smart said that people who live in the area could apply, go on a list, and they would be the first choice for the thing. So I've got to thank Richard and Jane and whatever for, for, for bringing this forward, but it is much needed, it would be much used, and I've got to be honest, I'd love to move it, Chair, if you don't mind. Thank you, I will uh, put approval. that down. Uh, Councillor Glenn Goodbury. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm happy to second that, uh, that motion. Uh, 
Councillor Moore's done a lot of work on allotment provision within the borough. Um, it's quite clear of its uh, physical and mental uh, contributions to the quality of life. And uh, um, I'll be happy to see this reinstated as um, allotment land as it once was. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Phil Trumper. I have nothing to add, really. It's an excellent scheme. I was going to move it myself, but um, Phil's already moved it, so that's really quite. support of it. Roberta Swires. Absolutely in support. I would have moved it. Everybody's going to move it. What, Thank a, you. <laughs> what a brilliant end to the meeting because yeah. this is something that's really needed, really essential, and makes people happy. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Richmore. Thank you, Chair. It had to be me or Bill who was going to move this. <laughs> He's ward councillor, but I was chair of the overview and scrutiny task and finish group. Um, we looked into allotment provision. Um, there hadn't been a, a review in 10 years, so uh, we worked together. Um, Jane and, and, and one or two others have been very helpful, uh, Councillor Jeffels also. Um, the allotments are oversubscribed within the borough to, um, massively, and I think um, you know, we all understand the benefits of growing your own food. So to, to get to this stage where, um, where, where we're looking at the cusp of having a new set of allotments to provide for the locals first as a priority when the uh, and what I would like to do as this cha um, the chair of this task and finish allotments group would be to scout out more areas and work together and see if we can do more of the same. Thank you. Thank you. Right, so we'll move to a vote. We have a mover and a seconder. Did you want to say something, Jane? Yes, I'm just so pleased. Thanks to Councillor Moore for actually starting this off and being the chairman. Um, it's, a, it's great news that something's come forward and also the back bit of the, the premise, the land that were, was allotments now being open, that you can have it as a, for residents, for growing things in, not, not fruit and veg, cause, but trees. Um, not, uh, it, is, it will become part of the community. Thank you. Just being selfish, just saying something, I hope you will consider Newland Crescent as being local to the area as well. <laughs> Uh, all those, would you like to state the motion? So the motion is to approve uh, Grant Planning Commission in accordance with the recommendation. Thank you. All those in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, that brings the meeting to an end. Thank you very much for your attendance and have a safe journey home. <laughs>